Everybody. Welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today we're talking about GFP, the green fluorescent protein, and similar proteins in other colors. Basically, it's a joke how much we use these proteins in synthetic biology. You could rename the whole field comparative GFP studies and you would not be that wrong. But soon, you'll be in on the joke because by the end of this lesson, you'll understand the different flavors of GFP and how to choose the right one for your application. The original GFP was isolated from a jellyfish called Ecoria victoria. It was a huge scientific advance, they totally got the Nobel Prize and all that, but the protein itself, the natural protein, basically sucks. The fluorescence is dim, the spectrum is a mess, it takes forever to fold and on and on and on. Suck city. But luckily, in the years since GFP, researchers have isolated dozens of mutant versions of GFP in every color of the rainbow with many useful properties for you to choose from. The first rule of talking about GFP is that people love to say GFP. It's very easy to say, it sounds scientific, GFP, GFP. If you have a red version, maybe you call it RFP, or a yellow one is YFP. In casual conversation, People often use these little names to talk about fluorescent proteins in general or general colors of fluorescent protein, but not necessarily specific GFP variants. Specific fluorescent proteins get individual and often poetic sounding names. Uh, you'll hear things like sapphire, cerulean, or strawberry to uniquely identify specific proteins. These names refer to exact amino acid sequences with well-defined properties, but people can be quite casual as they switch from talking about GFPs in general to a specific variant. So when you're looking up a specific sequence, you should double check to make sure you found exactly the protein that you want. The marquee property of every fluorescent protein is its color. Each one has an associated excitation spectrum and emission spectrum. These need to be well matched to your measuring device. In general, your equipment will be able to emit photons in a specific range of wavelengths and collect photons in another range. As these ranges get close together, you start detecting your own light instead of the light from GFP. So the two need to be well separated and they should roughly match the peaks in the absorbance and the emission spectra of your protein. This starts to get hard when you want to use more than one protein at the same time. In that case, for each protein, you need to find a unique range in the spectrum for absorbance and emission to separate the signal from the other proteins. In practice, there's usually some crosstalk between proteins because the spectra are not completely distinct. But in practice, you can get that crosstalk down to acceptable levels for two or even three separate proteins if you choose them carefully. As important as a protein's color is its brightness. A bright protein gives you a strong signal for your experiments and makes a beautiful picture. The brightness is calculated as the product of the extinction coefficient, which measures how frequently photons are absorbed, and the quantum yield, which measures how many of those photons are re-emitted. Commonly used proteins can vary in brightness by a factor of 10, so make sure you have a good one. But even a bright protein won't stay bright unless it also has good photostability. Eventually, every fluorescent protein that you use will burn out or photobleach. Some proteins can survive being bombarded with light for several minutes, while others last only seconds. This property matters the most if you plan to hit cells with a very bright light or take many measurements over a long time. Last but not least is the folding and maturation time. Every protein needs to be translated and then fold into its final form before it can start to work. For fluorescent proteins, these folding times can be as short as five minutes or as long as an hour. Can you wait an hour for your protein to appear or is your experiment already gonna be over by then? Color, brightness, photostability, and folding. These are four big things to consider when you pick up a GFP or a YFP or an RFP, but these are really just the beginning of the story. 
Above all, it takes experience to know which version works best in your cells, on your microscope, in your hands, and so on. GFP nerds can really go deep on picking just the right protein. So I recommend that you find one uh, and get their advice, see what they have to say. Maybe there's one in a lab near you. Okay, until next time, keep it colorful. Thank you.